All right, so we're going to be talking about the mid-season update for Season 5, and this is probably going to be one of the best ones in terms of just unit releases and everything that's going to be coming with it. So let's sort of get into that. We're going to be getting Chapter 7, which means so far we've had three real patch updates. I don't count Chapter 4, really, because that should have came out on launch since I'm sure they had it ready way before launch, which I I, agree, I, I know they did because they released it two weeks after. So we've had three real Chapter updates, and and this is going to be um the one for season five now besides just this i want to talk about just the fact that like um week one we got all the seasonal for season five we got all the seasonal stuff with like the banners new events um also the new game mode plus also the obviously hall of illusions reset week two we got event arena and week three which is the week coming up right now we're going to be getting uh chapter seven plus also guild boss which is going to be really nice finally uh something that actually matters in guild which to me is very 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 nice now what the actual chapter seven is going to be is the Catan defense battle so this is going to be pretty pretty nice um it's going to be basically just uh the mini arc that we got uh from ch episode 51 to 53 so it is a three 51 it's a three episode uh arc but it is a pretty good three episodes and it's just straight to the point which is nice actually it's less than three episodes if you really count it because i was watching it for the first half of episode 51 it's just a recap of the seabed temple so uh yeah this is gonna be a very short chapter but uh, a very compact one that's good so we're going to be getting into basically everything that is going to be coming out. Now, uh, it is a mini arc, right, of course, but uh, let, let's just talk about it. So the main thing I'd say is definitely Langris. So we, had, we got a little like trailer, but let's talk about uh, the main point. So I pulled up some stuff from Crunchyroll, which is going to be pretty important, right? Uh, so the first part is the uh, like Diamond Kingdom. Let me turn this off. But we got the Diamond Kingdom like sort of captains. So we've got Lagus, right? Let me, let me, I don't want to really play anything, but we got Yagos and then we got Brox. These three are the new, like, kind of units that we're going to, some of the new units we're going to get, new characters introduced, I guess I should say. Um, and they all get fights within this, but I'm not really trying to watch an hour of this. I, I've already watched it, but I actually did really like this art, but I wanted to make this video. So you can kind of see on the, on this, right? So they're going to get into fights later on. Um, but mainly this focus is on William, Yami, uh, you know, and Langris. So yeah, Langris is basically shown. I'm pretty sure his first appearance is episode 48, but, uh, now he's really like kind of fleshed out a bit more in this, uh, mini arc for the contend defense battle or invasion arc. I don't know how you want to call it. I guess invasion would be a more correct name, but after that, we've also got, uh, oh, let me, let me, yeah, we also got, uh, the battle with Yuno and I think it's Yagus, the one that he's battling. So this is probably going to be having to do a good amount of original animations because I don't think they have too much to go off of unless the manga like did a lot better job. But we've got um, this guy versus Yuno. Uh, you can kind of see a bit, but it's just kind of hard to really pinpoint because it's just a bunch of uh, like scenes of them in the air. But overall, this is going to be pretty nice. And then the last part really in it is going to be the Yami and William confrontation of Yami starting to have his doubts about William, which obviously this is all spoilers. But hey, uh, I'm just telling you guys to recap for this chapter. Now, this is going to be really good because this is uh, something that they posted themselves. So uh, this is why I'm more inclined to actually talk about it. But funnily enough, these two are the in-game arts, which like it was leaked, which ooh, they were leaked. But um, like I, I have them pulled up right next to me and it's literally the in-game arts for the two on the right uh, being, I think, Yagis and Lagos. I think, I think I got it right. No. Okay. This one's Lagos and this one's Yagos. Okay. I mixed up the names and this one's Brokus. So uh, these three are going to be the SRs of this update. I don't think we have the actual... Um, oh, I just realized something. But anyway, I'll talk about that in a sec. I don't think we have the actual kits for them leaked, but I'm going to talk about... Uh, you know and Langris. but anyway what's very funny is that he's an electric unit which makes even more sense as to why shock was also buffed from 15 to 20 percent because obviously we got a new shock unit and we got a new burn unit this season so makes sense why both of those were buffed now i'm not really too sure for the other ones uh i haven't really checked through it too much but i'm hoping at least one of the three will be good because they're sr units and we have it's been proven that srs can be good 
right? Like we do have some good SRs. Gifso, Finerol, Charmy is decent, right? We've got Voltos, Soul. So we can get Asta too. Asta is very good. And Vanessa is good early game, but not really anymore. But overall, we do have some good SRs and I'd like for the new ones to be good. Um, Gifso was a pretty nice one for certain stages in um, Hall of Illusion. So, you know, certain things like that are uh, exemplary cases that I would like to happen for these three. And now we've also got Langris and Yuno, which do seem to be the two SSRs. Now, the big thing for Yuno, I guess why they did a unit for him, is mainly because of Bell. Bell is with Yuno now. So, uh, where, where could I? I swear I could probably... Is it earlier on? Huh, where would it be? Would it be here? I, I mean, listen, uh, okay, probably it, it's like, yeah, so like you see, you know, is with Bell, um, right? So like, this is like, obviously after the uh, Diamond, or uh, the like Mars fight, but we haven't really seen too much of you know, because after the Mars fight was um, the Midnight Sun, which the Midnight Sun, um, did not involve Yuno, know, and then afterwards it was Seabed Temple, which obviously did not involve Yuno. Know. So it makes sense why this unit is coming out. Now, I've already made a video with the leaks involved, but I'm not really going to be uh, posting any art for the leaks. Now, I'm going to be talking a bit about the kits, but that's as far as it goes. But if you want to see the arts, they are pretty nice, though. I really do like it. But yeah, it's basically the reason why uh, Yuno got an SSR is because he's with Bell. That's like the main reason. And Langris, well, because Langris is a new unit and an SSR and a vice captain that's very strong, right? So that is definitely something to mention. So these are the kits that we have so far. Note that they will probably change. Uh, we could probably get that this is the skeleton, but usually since I think the main like change was Julius and since Julius, the leaks have never been spot on since then. Um, so that is definitely something, but at least we got some leaks. That is always a good thing. Uh, but we know that at least uh, Langris is basically guaranteed to get a banner. But Yuno is also an SSR. Uh, we just don't have like his banner art. Like that purple banner art thingy that Langris has. We do not have it. And we also don't have the banner animations for any of them. But we can guess because of this. And them showing these two alongside the three in the back. It would make sense for those five to be the units. Which three new SSRs plus two SSRs is really great. And I do not see them uh, doing this next season. Because the next season should be the uh, Diamond Kingdom like... Um, recovery with uh what's it called fanzel fanzel and asta like for the swords right so that's going to be definitely something now langris uh i think is probably going to be langris and you know are both going to be insane now as for speed uh does not i think you know might just be base speed but langris i'm going to guess is probably going to be one of the those high speed dps's if we're really being for real right because finral uh obviously if we go to supporter he is like high speed and they're brothers they both have spatial magic so Unless I'm mistaken, but they both have spatial, spa spatial magic. So to me, it would make sense. Now, as for Yuno, he does have higher spatial magic, uh, spatial speed. I was thinking too much about it. Speed as a debuffer SSR, but as his SR attacker, it's the normal 103 speed. So we'll have to see what they do with Yuno. But usually they kind of like to keep a trend um, for multiple units if they do the same thing, where uh, both Noels have. Where is it? So like Noel herself as a DPS has higher speed. And then obviously as a debuffer, Noel. Uh, has higher speed than like some other ones. So that's how I kind of base it off. But except for that, how I, I mean, two charmies, both charmies uh, are decently quick, but it's kind of hard to give precise examples on that. But I would say that, uh, you know, it would make sense to me that Langris has high speed. So let's start with Langris since his kit is more complete. We could kind of guess what it's going to be about, but it's basically Langris stealing SP or just gaining a bunch of SP. So for this, we're really going to have to hope that his ultimate is great. Because skill 1 uh, has a chance to give, grant yourself SP buff. And then the skill 2 sacrifices some of the allies SP to give yourself SP. While also having a reduced HP recovery. Um, I'm guessing this would be a single target. I'm not too sure. Or No, this is just a buff skill. I think they're going to have to add a bit more for this buff skill to be worth it. The ultimate though is going to be crazy, I believe. If this AoE is good damage, I could see this being very nice. Um, so what it's going to do is uh, increase all favorite damage for allies, reduce HP recovery, debuff, and HP recovery immunity. Now, this is not too crazy. You would hope for something more like Noelle for an AoE alt. What Noelle does really good, obviously, is because of the fact that she gives herself magic attack for the attack and also two turns after, which is insane. Um, so you would hope that Langris does something like that. And his passive is an immortality passive, which is always really good. Now his awakening passive is grants SP buff and another SP buff when you use your ultimate and then you get max, max HP recovery. So I'm going to guess that his ult has to be a bit crazier than what it is right now if they want to sell him properly because I think they do. 
Um, it definitely does seem to me like they should, at least because we should not be getting... Next season, it's going to be Fonzel and, like, the girl. So, um, I don't really think they're going to be, like, insanely crazy. But they know Langris is a very hype unit. That's why they also focused on uh, Langris mainly um, in this, right? So, I definitely think that Langris is just a hype unit in all the communities. In the English community, um, at least. Let me let me try to find it. But, uh, from... Oh, whoops. Let me... My bad. Langris. So, like, the tweet itself got 600 likes. And a lot of people were excited, right? I think that, to me, if I if we view the quotes, like, people are um, very excited. Uh, you know, like, even Japanese people, I remember seeing that a bit. But, you know, uh, overall, very positive reception for Langris without even saying he was a unit. So that's going to be good. They just need to make Langris's ultimate better. And this could be a very interesting kit because he sacrifices some of the allies SP, which honestly could work very well with Charlotte since she only needs 6 SP. And also, um, going to be, Noel's going to be a hard counter to Langris. Now, my guess is that Langris needs to be a red unit. Uh, to me, it just makes the most amount of sense for him to be red. He can't be blue because there's just too many blues. And now, um, as for DPSs, we are perfectly set. AoE, single target, single target, single target, right? They're, they just showed it. And then if we go to red, um, I would say that we... It's just green needs it, but I'm going to guess that Yuno is going to be the green. And you can't, you're going to be like, well, Giku, you can't have another green, you know? Anyway. Yes, there's already two green Yunos, but man, it doesn't really matter when there's three red Astas, you know? So I could see Yuno being green and it would make the most amount of sense to me. But if they do like, you know, red and Langris green, I mean, that's fine too. We just need to make sure there's no more blue units. We need to kind of get a, a bit more red and greens. And so that would be nice that uh, Langris is red or green. Now, um, it's just that his alt needs to be really crazy. Because if it isn't, like, I just don't see the point. Because to me, this isn't like insane. I, I just, I need more. I need more if they're gonna make his whole kit revolve around his ultimate. Now, you know, all we really know is that his ult reduces mobility and he gives a mobility buff to self. And then uh, also when he attacks someone with silence, he grants an SP buff. And when he uh, grants, or when he attacks someone with total silence, he inflicts SP minus on them. And then when they're silenced, there is extra chance to grant self SP plus X. So both of these units are going to get their own special points, which is going to probably work really well with each other. Um, I'm going to guess Yuno is probably going to be a very quick unit just looking off of this kit. So yeah, he's probably going to have very high speed. I'm going to guess he's an attacker. Um, if not, they can make another debuffer. I just don't see it. And we need a DPS SSR, you know, would go crazy. So I really do see them both being DPSs. Which would make this season probably one of the best um, in terms of like cannon units, which is what we want. Kind of sucks that the seasonals are not uh, that crazy. But overall, it's fine because of everything that we are getting. But yeah, no, this is going to be a very hype season. Our hype two units. I think that uh, I'm ready, right? Like if we check right now, I've got 18,000 crystals plus 70 tickets. Um, I'm going to be able to get like what? That's 18,000 crystals is about what? So 12 is that that's 150 pulls so i have 220 pulls right now i'll be able to get up to 300 we should be able to get both of them if i get a bit lucky i don't think i'm going to try to go for dupes because we got a lot of stuff coming up but you know maybe global uh because it should be coming out in the next two months we should be getting confirmation of that within the next two weeks because it's obviously i don't i don't believe it's coming out on october but i can see november for sure like this i i do not doubt that it's in like max november uh, obviously i've said this a lot but now it's just at the point where if it doesn't come out, then I'm probably going to quit the game, guys. I'm not going to lie. Uh, or at least give up on uh, Canada and not post as much. I'm only going to, like, post on important stuff. But, uh, yeah, no, it's for sure going to, like, this isn't even cope anymore. I just know in the next two months it's going to come out. So, you know, money-wise, I'll be safe. I'll, I'll, safe. I'll be safe, right? But no, Langris, you know what? Let me know what you guys think. And do you think Yagos, Lagos, or Brokas are going to be good? Let me know. And finally, Bell is going to be coming too. So yeah, that's pretty cool.